Okay, one last reminder that this session is being recorded uh, for your review at a later point, if you'd like, or to share with others. Uh, it is going to be available to people who were unfortunately unable to make the session today, and you can share it with others on your staff as well. So thank you for being here today. My name is Mike Schnell. I am the Community Engagement Coordinator uh, for Southeast Service Cooperative. Thank you to those that are watching the recording at a later point as well. Uh, my colleagues joining us today are Career Navigators, Marianne Smith, who most of you have heard from uh, already today, Jamie Schwickerath, Sue Lalarad, Nick Wobig, and Katie Hendrickson. We're also joined today by Sarah Ness, who's the pro Program Manager for Workforce Development here at Southeast Service Co Cooperative. Uh, so research shows that the top two influencers on young people for choosing what they do moving forward are number one, their parents, whether their parents believe it or not, and number two, their experiences. Uh, that's why something like Future Forward is so important. Regardless of your position in your company or in the professional world, you have something to offer to students who are exploring the possibilities of their future employment. It's your story of how you got to where you are today and what you do on a daily basis that can influence a young person's career choice. What you do will, and what we will be doing with Future Forward will help you positively impact uh, your, your future workforce. The, what you're doing, the work you're doing today is influencing your future employees. That's something to think about all the time. This isn't just about uh, this isn't just about the professional world. This isn't just about the educational world. It's really about both. It's about influencing what we're all going to see in our future workforce as we move forward. And truly, we've said thank you a few times. But when we say thank you, we truly mean thank you. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your partnership with education. Thank you for what you're doing for these students. And thank you for what you're doing with our future workforce. We very much appreciate it. So uh, let me give you a quick review of Future Forward. So uh, we'll have Marianne start the screen share here. So when you're going into Future Forward, you're going to see, let's see if we can see the front screen here, Future Forward real quick. Uh, just go to futureforward.org, www.futureforward.org, and that will bring you to that home screen of what Future Forward is. So this is just kind of an overview of what Future Forward is all about, what you should expect to see when you're uh, going into there. There gives uh, a review of what the benefits are for both education and uh, employers and professionals. And then when you log in, that'll kind of be the next step. Uh, it's a web-based application that connects teachers and students with companies and industry professionals. It was created based on years of conversation with both industry and education, where they jointly expressed the need for a tool that allows everyone to highlight different experiences in a variety of different career clusters. Perhaps most importantly, this tool will help students see themselves in a variety of different career options. One of the things we mentioned before was the top two influencers are what their parents do. So really what students know are what their parents do and what their friends' parents do. Their experiences allows them to really broaden that world to see things that they maybe haven't seen before. And that's something that you can really do through Future Forward. Uh, and a lot of times this will make things, uh, it will make them know that a variety of careers are available for them that they didn't know that were available for them. And truly from your perspective as employers, it's gonna help build the workforce pipeline. And that's something that we're very, uh, uh, we're very serious about doing. So one additional thing of note, when you look at Future Forward, you will notice you can, you can search for uh, educators and schools and businesses, and you can connect to other professionals. All of these contacts are gonna be useful for you in the work that you do both on Future Forward 
and in what you do in general. It's going to be a, a very quick and easy way to stay connected with a variety of different people. So let's talk a little bit about completing your profile. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, your interests. One of the things that you're doing, one of the ways that students and teachers are using Future Forward is to network. Students may have a, an assignment to interview a professional in a career of interest or complete a job shadow. Students can utilize Future Forward to identify companies or professionals in, in a career field they are interested in. From the menu, students will find professionals and they can either filter by industry or type in a keyword in the search field. And then how do you, as a professional, get your profile to appear in this keyword search? And I see Marianne is highlighting it as we're speaking. Uh, are you ready to search for the golden ticket? The interest box on your profile. Anything career related that you want your profile to highlight, you would put inside of that interest area. It's one quick way that you would get that information out there for everybody to see. Now let's talk about uh, the other area of the image, another way for people to find a little bit more about you. Think about the first impression for your business. Think about the first impression that you would have for you and think about what you would want others to think about you and your company. One way for students and teachers to find out a little bit more about you and to know a little bit more about you, and frankly, to see that you're engaged in what you're talking about here is a profile picture. That profile picture and a completed company page uh, goes a long way in showing that you're engaged in the work that you're doing here today. For example, let's say a student wants to reach out to a crew member for a construction company and you're a foreman, the student is a lot more likely to click on your profile and learn more about your career or company if they see that you have an image on there and that you have completed information about yourself uh, on there. Like, you know, I'm, I'm seeing what we go through here. You know, I saw Bob there had some information ha that was uh, on there and he has a little bit about uh, uh, being a plumber. You see that Chris has a profile image. Those are simple ways that you can increase the attention to your profile. You know, one of the things that we know is that students, much like uh, students, quite frankly, are like the rest of us, what they really like to see is pictures and they like to see videos. So those are two great ways that you can engage folks uh, in what you're doing. This is a great way to show off the diversity of your company as well, uh, both in the work you do and the people that you have on staff. Let's all remember that what we're trying to do here is we're trying to allow students to see themselves in the work that you do. And then for all of you, those of you who are uh, administrators of your company page, uh, we're going to be doing a Future Forward 201 training taking place on August 3rd. Katie is going to be, uh, uh, Katie is going to be putting in a link to that. We'll put a registration link for that in the company chat. One other thing that I want to note is that you may want to try to log into Future Forward while you're uh, uh, watching this. Uh, if for some reason you're unable to log in, just put in the chat that you're having login difficulties and somebody from uh, SSC, I think both Jamie and Sarah are monitoring the chat for that. They're gonna be going on there. They'll, they'll uh, uh, do the work to allow you to get into your account and uh, what we're going to do. So we're gonna be taking a really, really quick break. And what this break is for is to allow you to go in there and uh, spend a few minutes uh, setting up your personal profile, seeing what it's all about. And then when we come back from that quick break, uh, we're going to uh, have Marianne take on the rest of this and kind of walk you through 
of the a uh, few of the additional steps of what you're going to need to do to set up uh, different events and experiences and really get your page set up uh, appropriately for uh, uh, to to have your uh, to have the situation where students are going to want to engage with you. So we're going to take a quick break here and uh, uh, make sure to go in and set up your account. Uh, make sure to go in and set up your page. And like I said before, if for some reason you're unable to get into your uh, page, just put something in the chat and Sarah or Jamie will go in there and they will get you uh, logged in. So thank you for being here. Thanks, Mike. And just a reminder, uh, questions, anything, let us know. And we will take a three to four minute break while you give you a little time to work on your personal profile. All right, I had a question come to me in the chat about registering a new um, professional. So whether this be a colleague or yourself, if you haven't been in there yet. Um, from, I'm gonna try to share my screen. From the futureforward.org page, when you're in the portal login button, Oops, I finished logging out. This page has a login. It also has register. To start a new account as a professional, you'll need to register and put your information in here. So one thing to note on that area down below on the registration page that asks for your profession it's asking what you personally do, and that's because of how Future Forward is built. Students are going to are going to connect with you based on the interests that they specifically have. So, if they have an interest in uh, construction, they may have an interest in being an engineer, for example. So they're going to want to connect with engineers, or they may have an interest in being a foreman. And so they're gonna to wanna to connect with the folks who are boots on the ground in that situation. So that's why it asks for what you specifically do. When you go in and create your company page, that's what's gonna, when it's gonna ask what your company generally does. You know, if you're a bank, for example, it, another example, banks have a variety of people that are not just the tellers that you see on a regular basis. There's a huge variety of people from marketing to human resources to the folks who do loans. All of those things are inside of uh, the bank and you're gonna have students that wanna connect with every single facet of that. Thanks, Mike. Um, our break is officially over, but I have another question to answer. And the question is to ask, to talk about the volunteer roles in setting up your account. So um, this is just what you're willing to be reached out to from schools specifically. So there are, um, there will be, if you just hover over uh, an explanation of what an expert presenter is, experts from business and industry, um, so if you just hover over the individual items, it'll give a little description for you. It just helps in the filtering when net, in the network, find professionals. One way to filter professionals is by the roles that you're willing to help out with. Great questions. All right. Well, with that, we keep the questions coming. We really want this to be really valuable to you in using Future Forward. So if there's anything, just put it in the chat. Uh, again, we have Sarah and Jamie monitoring that and um, we will keep going. Sarah? I'll have you take a look at Heather's question. Thank you. Um, Mike, will you go ahead and share your screen? 
we are going to shift gears from the individual profiles to sharing your expertise. And part of the purpose of today's training is to help you connect with the next generation of workers. For those of you who are following along in your computer, you're going to start at your dashboard. Great. So right there in the middle, you see we are going to explore the lesson topics feature and it's under the section called share your expertise with students. We're gonna browse the lesson topics. So let me fill you in on a little background. In the education world, career navigators and people like Mike and Sarah are working with teachers in Future Forward. And one of the things they teachers have identified is the need for guest speakers and connecting to professionals like you. In Future Forward, this feature, this section is gonna be the primary feature utilized by teachers because this is where you come in. These topics are how educators will search for and coordinate with experts like you for guest speaking, also known as expert presenters for their students. This is a library of content. Professionals like you have identified topics that you're willing to present on and you want to see high school students exposed to. It's also a library of content that educators have indicated that they want taught in their classrooms by a professional, an expert in the field. So what does a topic look like? Inside the topic, you'll see a summary, learning objectives, educational standards, professionals, and educators. So for demonstration purposes, I'd like to tell you an example of something that happened this spring. I was working with a teacher out of Caledonia, a business teacher, and she went in here to find a topic to match for her sports and marketing class. There was not one that matched for her. She wanted a guest speaker. And so she created a topic. Thank you, Mike, demonstrating that. Um, she put in the information of what she wanted kind of at a high level for her students to be exposed to by somebody knowledgeable in the field. To support her, I coordinated with a professional that would be very great in addressing working with students and talking about these very things. So Chris Hahn put, came in here and selected this topic for himself as a professional and Nick Wobig as well. So this is where you come in, in finding topics that you're knowledgeable about, you're willing to share on, you use in your everyday job um, and students would benefit from knowing when they enter the workforce. We want you to explore right now, use the keyword searching, use the filter by course where you, it, this topic might show up in the high school classroom. When you see something that fits you, go ahead, you'll notice on the banner, on the lower right hand corner, a little graduation hat. When you click that graduation hat, that's you saying, I'm knowledgeable about this. I would love to be an expert presenter on it. I um, am comfortable with educators reaching out to me. So the right in the middle, right in the middle, you'll see um, once you the topics I can teach. So it's a nice quick reference for you of what you have volunteered for. Um, as you get more um, expertise and other topics you're willing to present on, you can refer back to the topics I can teach and add more if anything is missing. Or you can take a look at if any new educators are identifying as I want professionals to come in and talk. The really cool thing is that you as a professional can be proactive and start a conversation with an educator. Mike, can you show us how we could do that? So under the educators tab, so 
let's just go into the star is born lessons topic. Thank you. And then under the educators tab, you'll see the chat button. This is a great way to proactively ask educators if you can come in and talk to address their class. Maybe you have um, some openings coming up you know of, or you have some experiences that you'd really love to invite some students to um, learn about your industry and your job. So one other way that we can support you as crew navigators, Mike, Sarah, is that there's, you know what kind of training you're giving young people, new employees. And if that topic is not here in this library, we really encourage you to be an advocate for your company and your industry and put it in here. We can help support you by connecting you with the local teachers to help identify classrooms that would be a match for that topic. And then we can fit, have professionals and educators both identified in the topic feature. So let's say, I'm gonna pass you for questions. Any questions in the group? Well, let's say that you are looking through the topics and you, you're reading through the summary and the learning objectives. Fabulous, everything looks good. There's these bullet points and you're like, mm, I'm really great at the first three, four bullet points, but that last one, not so sure about. That's okay. You can still select that as an area of your expertise because once a teacher starts communicating with you about being a guest presenter, you and that teacher can work out the details of the time of the class. Is it virtual? Is it in person? Which of the learning objectives fit their unit this time? Every classroom is different. Every teacher is different. So it's really pretty flexible. These bullet points are meant to be a starting point in that conversation. What does it look like when an educator requests you to come in and be a guest speaker? Well, you will get an email notification from Future Forward letting you know of this request. Go into Future Forward and you'll see three date and time choices that the teacher picked that works in their schedule. You compare it to your calendar, identify which one works best for you. And if none of them do, that's okay. Click deny and then follow up with the teacher if you do want to be a guest speaker and just say, hey, I'm at a conference all that week. I would love to, but here are some possible dates the week after. Do any of those work? So it's okay if the dates the teacher chooses don't work for you, just simply follow up and offer some alternatives. So now let's take a little time to explore. Go into the topics page, explore what type of topics you use, your expertise, and see if you can identify two, I'm gonna challenge you, three topics that you can click the graduation hat on and be available for our educators. So if you are doing this at um, alongside us, you're going to click on resources. The top tabs, click resources and find lesson topics. That will get you to the page of exploring topics. Now, because I really love interaction, I'm going to ask for a volunteer willing to tell me what one topic is that they that you would do at your work. 
that you would be willing to teach to high school students? Um, this is Heather. I would um, teach like, you know, kind of the either career paths within the skilled nursing home and assisted living. Um, or I could um, bring in like a nurse and have them teach kind of their career path and why they chose long term care and what they did for school, you know, kind of walk through that career path. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So for you, Heather, let's use the filter by course. And you'll notice health career exploration is one of the options. Can we have, um, is Mike sharing his screen? Can we have Mike do those steps so we can see what it looks like? Yeah. I was chatting with somebody, so I did not get the specifics of what you were trying to do. So uh, why don't you walk through it again with me and I will uh, in do, indeed do that share for you. Perfect, Mike. All right. When you're ready. I'm ready. On the top, go to resources. Yep. And go to find lesson topics. Now using the filter by course, go down to health, health career exploration. Okay. Let's just say, Mike, that you would be willing to teach overview of veterinary medicine. Right there, click that graduation hat. Okay, and now is it showing up under your topics I can teach? It sure is. Now, sometimes you'll get a, Ben, I see your question. Sometimes the unable to teach topic, little message pops up and that's just a little glitch, so Go back into that lesson and see if your name shows up under the professionals. If not, you'll be able to um, just try it again. So I think what's actually happening is that um, Ben may have clicked on the graduation hat to add the topic to his profile. Once you click on it, if you hover over it, that's an option to kind of unlink your profile to it in the future. So Ben, just go back and check to see if it's added to your repertoire of expertise. And if you were to click on that hat again, it should remove it from your profile and unattach your, your name from it, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. Great questions. So one other neat feature is sharing out. Um, we can live chat professionals in here. So Heather, for instance, um, I know you asked about the healthcare. There are lots of healthcare related topics in here. So confidentiality in ethics and healthcare is another topic in here. So I'm going to send you a chat and tell you, um, check out confidentiality and ethics topic.
There it is. Thank you, Mike. Another volunteer that wants to share out what they're an expert in and a topic they may be interested in presenting to schools. So I did as a professional for career exploration, if you would want to go through one of those. Yes, Jamie, thank you. So using the keyword search, which is really just searching the title of the topics. Mike put in career. And that comes with several options, career pathway exploration, career, exploring careers in healthcare, intro to career planning and exploration. Jamie, which one? Did you, do any of these resonate with you? Um, yeah, the one with, I selected the single industry and then the one below post-secondary career options, college or not, both of those sound beneficial. Awesome. Thank you. What do we think about the topics? Do you see yourself creating any? Or which one are you looking forward to presenting on? I'm gonna encourage a little feedback from everybody in the chat or verbally share. How do you see yourself using topics? Marianne, can you remind me, um, this is one of the features that all of the teachers are going to be trained in on in August, correct? Yes. So this would be a good place for us. Once we update our personal profile, we did the things that Mike talked about, just to really go in here and explore these and really attach our names to the ones that we feel confident that we can speak on or maybe encourage others that we know to do that because it sounds like teachers will be going in here and that will be kind of their, after they complete their profile, their first thing that they're gonna be charged with doing. You're absolutely right, Sarah. And this is a really great time to do exactly those steps. Update your profile, have your image, enter your interests, and then really spend some time in the topics to identify what you are knowledgeable about, what you want to share about, what you want your uh, new employees to know when they start their job, um, any of those things to set up our young people for success and connect with them in the classroom. Our teachers are being trained and connecting with people like you. And after this last year, they are very hungry and excited to have in-person um, communication and content and professionals visiting their classroom. So if we wanna suggest a topic, how do we, would we do that? Just up here, suggest a topic, I see it there. Well, you can suggest a topic or you could even create one, Heather. If you don't, okay. don't see what you're looking for, Okay. Mm -hmm. The suggested topic um, feature does go to us at the co-op um, that we can be tasked with going out and finding a professional who might be interested in um, being attached to that topic. But if you are a content expert in it, we would just highly recommend skipping the middleman and just going ahead and putting in the information, um, you know, as little or as much as you'd like um, in there. And then um, that will show up anytime a new uh, topic is created, that kind of shows up on the, on everybody's dashboard page. So whether it's a teacher or whether it's another professional, they should see 
in that right-hand column the new topics that were created that week. So one other thing of note, sometimes I think that the idea of uh, creating a topic can almost seem a little overwhelming to folks. There is no wrong way to do this. Uh, you put a title, a short description, and a quick summary of it in there, that's great. That's going to provide people with the information they need on it. Like we talked about, this is a starting point for a conversation between a professional and an educator. It is not the end all be all. Uh, and it turns out that a lot of uh, educators are only going to want one or two things taught in their classroom, maybe not the whole litany of 10 to 20 things that you can teach on. So just putting a good overview, a good general overview in there uh, is great and you don't need to worry about uh, getting specific, uh, for lack of better terms, education speak in there. Uh, that can go in there on a later basis as well. Great questions. As you're looking through topics, you might think of somebody else in your company or in your community or your industry that is really great at explaining that particular topic. Who else do you know that enjoys sharing what they know or is an advocate for career and technical education? Send them an email, connecting them to the person who invited you here today or to Mike or to me. We wanna meet them and let them know of this opportunity to share their expertise with our high school students. So uh, we want to open up the floor to more questions. It's really great. Want to make sure to get any of your questions answered. So one other thing of note about Future Forward and how it's working, it's here uh, in Southeast Minnesota right now, but I know that uh, many of you have multiple branches that are either throughout Minnesota or in other areas as well. Future Forward is expanding and will be uh, over in Western Minnesota. Uh, later this year into next year, uh, Northern Minnesota, the cities, uh, all of those places are areas that uh, are looking at expanding into Future Forward right now. So it's something to think about the fact that you're able to increase your reach uh, from that perspective as well. Well, just two parting thoughts then for you. A reminder that the next layer is our training in August, on August 3rd, called 201. And that is to help um, ex expand experiences that companies, industries, professionals want to host for students. And we'll get into that in that training. Um, the second thing I have for you is to share this with your colleagues, Chamber of Commerce industry leaders, the movers and shakers in your um, industry, in your area, that want to be strengthening our workforce pipeline through connecting education and industry. We are happy to help assist you or anyone in any capacity, provide training tailored to you, your company, whatever. So we really are very grateful for your time to come today. Uh, we are here for the next 15 minutes to answer questions, help you in explore more topics, whatever we can do to help you. And then we really would love your feedback. Um, so I'll, you'll get an email with some um, questions. Just want to make sure that we've gotten all your questions answered, but I'll send an email with some feedback. So. To recap, 
update your profile, your pictures, your description, your interests. Add your profile to topics that resonate with your strengths and expertise. And as always, reach out with any questions anytime.